Hey everyone, it is Vian from Mountain Road Ride here and today I want to talk to you about one by drivetrains. So uh, I think it's no secret that the popularity of a one by drivetrain has really taken off in the last few years and uh, nowadays we find so many of the bikes that come stocked with a one by drivetrain. So uh, I think things like uh, e-bike is now pretty much standard to see a one by on there. Um, we even see some of the top Ironman pros, time trial specialists at world tour level, opting to go with a one by setup. And then obviously things like this, a gravel bike right next to me, pretty much almost all of them come now with a one by setup. That raises the question, is a one by really as efficient as it can be, especially when you compare it to a two by setup? That's what I want to talk about to you today. So uh, I personally come from a road riding background where I've been running a two by setup on my bike for years. And I've recently in the last year or so been running this one by setup on my gravel bike. That brings me to the topic for today's discussion. I set out to try and make this one by setup as efficient as possible by trying to eliminate some of the shortfalls that come with a one by setup. So that's what we're gonna look at today. I'm gonna give you three things that I tried to improve the one by setup on this bike. See if you agree, see if you like it, see if you have any other suggestions than me. Let's get started. All right, so I think just before we get into the negatives, I mean, it's worthwhile to just quickly point to the positives of a one by setup and for me personally I'm a massive fan of a one by setup and I'm really rooting for the system to succeed in the future and I think personally I also have the opinion that it might just be the drivetrain of the future where all bikes will come with a one by setup but there's a lot of room for improvement that still need to happen before then. So if you do want to see some of my comparisons of both pros and cons, do check out the blog post um, that I'll put in the description. There I go into a lot more detail. But here's sort of the big highlights for me of a one by drivetrain. Number one, just looks simpler. Much more clean, minimalistic look. I think it's much more stylish makes it easier to clean as well. There's also the aerodynamic benefit of having a cleaner front end or cleaner area around your chain ring in the front. And I think that's why you'll see the time trialers prefer this type of setup. And then my personal favorite and the big thing to me why I really like the one by setup is that perfect continuum of gears. So no need to flip flop between small and front chain rings. Um, you just simply run up and down that cassette at the back so much easier to run a one by setup. Now, let's get to the three things that I want to address today as shortfalls or the negatives of a one by drivetrain. Drop chains, big jumps between cassette gears, and then also the cross chaining effect. So let's get started and I'll address each of those in detail. Right, so shortfall number one for me with a one by drivetrain really has to be those dropped chains. Um, I think it's no secret you have nothing there to prevent it from falling off. So should you hit a bump or the chain rattles out of place, it's going to hit the deck and the only way you're going to get it back up is to stop and physically put it back in place. Sure, modern day derailers like this one comes with a clutch system that's going to help prevent it from falling off, but it only works in most of the instances. There are some scenarios where the clutch just doesn't do the job and believe me I've been through them where you're going to drop a chain and that's why my simple solution for that was just to put something in place. If there's nothing there preventing a chain from dropping then you put something in place and my solution to this was the wolf tooth Narwolf chain guide. Now I did a whole in-depth review on that one already so I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you want to see this thing in action do check out my other blog post and the video that I'll put in the links. I think for me this chain guide has done a superb job and I can highly recommend this. Sure it adds a little bit of a weight penalty to the bike but at 44 grams that for me was weight well spent on this bike. Alright so the second big shortfall when it comes to a one by setup must surely be those bigger gaps that you find on a one by cassette. So I think it's this constant trade-off between wanting the range but at the same time also not finding those massive jumps between cassettes and especially on a, a one by setup you find quite a lot of massive gear jumps um, you can easily find towards the top end of your cassette jumps of four five six heck even on some of those massive cassettes even up to eight gear jumps 
Those are monstrous cassettes that you're going to put on the back of your bike. They look like dinner plates, but at the same time, they're also adding weight. And here's the important thing, it's rotational weight. So at the same time, it's also adding that additional slowdown when you are adding those bigger gears. So what did I do at the end of the day to try and address it as best as I could? I mean, there's only so many things that you can do. My strategy was really just to try and keep my cassette as condensed as possible. There's always the option to start changing up your front chain ring if uh, you do want a little bit of extra range. And so what I did was I moved from my original stock cassette, which is an 1142, to this one, which is the 11. Cassette. What I found with this one is that it just eliminates a lot of those bigger jumps. Um, on my previous cassette, I for instance had two five gear jumps. On this cassette that I have here, there's only one five gear jump from the 35 cog up to the 40 right at the end of the range. So I find that that gives me a lot more of a smooth run up and especially so when I climb I can maintain a much better cadence and not lose that rhythm up the hills. Now I did a lot of research on that. I went into all the nerdy details and created my own ratio tables. So do check that out in the blog post and I'll quickly pop them up here as well um, just so you can get an idea of what it takes to really start thinking about how you can best structure your one by setup to be as efficient as possible. Let's look at shortfall number three. This one being the cross chaining effect that we get with a one by setup. And to me, this is my personal biggest gripe with the one by setup. If you've come from that two by setup for all your life, you have been taught that you should never run certain gear combinations, i.e. the biggest chain ring in the front and the largest cog at the back, small chain ring in the front, smallest cog in the back, because of that cross chaining effect. It stretches your chain in a diagonal line as opposed to a straight line, and it puts additional stress and strain on your components, means it's going to be wearing out more and it's also creating friction in the system. Physics will tell you that power that's transferred through a straight line is also more efficient than a power being transferred through a diagonal or a cross line. So you're not being as efficient as possible when you're running those gear combinations where your, gear, where your chain is stretched at an angle. With a one by setup, it's inevitable that you're going to run into those combinations. It's just unavoidable that you're going to be running in your smallest cog or in your largest cog simply because you need that range. Now, I'm going to give you a quick audio test. Listen to this and see if you agree that when you're running your chain in those extreme combinations on a one by setup, you do in fact find that additional noise and grinding as you can hear the inefficiency in the system. Check this out. So I think you can agree that those combinations just aren't as efficient as they can be, especially when you compare them to a 2 by setup, because the way that a 2 by setup deals with those inefficiencies is that you simply just don't go into those gears at all. By moving the chain into a better line altogether through the use of a front derailleur, um, you don't have to run up to those extreme combinations where your chain is stretched at such an extreme angle. That means that there's just an inherent inefficiency in a one by setup. Now, try as you may, I think the physics will dictate that as long as you have one chain ring up front, meaning that there's a fixed position where your chain is going to grip onto, that angle will always be at a slightly extreme degree when uh, you are running a one by setup. So what did I try to do to at least in some way overcome this and was it successful? Well, I opted to go with better components. So uh, my previous cassette was in fact the um, Shimano SLX or the M7000 cassette. This one being the XT cassette or the M8000 cassette. Um, so my thinking or the logic behind that purchase was that let's try better components. Maybe the tolerances within those components just make them a little bit better 
at handling those sort of extreme degrees. And along with that, I also opted to go with a better chain. So instead of going with the mid-range chain that was on this bike, I opted to go for the XTR chain. Um, so really splashed out on some higher end components to really see if that in some way can overcome the inefficiencies in this one by drivetrain. What's the result at the end of the day? It really didn't make that much of a difference. At least in my experience, I could not see any noticeable improvement in those inefficiencies that you find when running those cross-chaining um, gear combinations. So those are my three things that I tried Putting in a stopper to event, prevent drop chains, I opted to go with a more compact cassette to avoid those bigger chain jumps. Obviously that is restrictive on your range. And I tried by upping to better components to see if I can eliminate some of that cross chaining effect. It didn't really work. So here's my key takeaway. I think at the end of the day, there's so much potential with a one by setup. And I'm really rooting, as I said, for this system to succeed. Um, I personally really like the one by setup. Um, but as it stands, it just currently falls short of what you can get on a 2x setup and the smooth, efficient running that you get with a 2x setup. Now, maybe I'm wrong, and if you're out there and you've got some suggestions for me, please leave them in the comments. I would love to know if there are any other strategies that I can follow to try and improve the running of my 1x drivetrain. The other question that you have to ask does it really matter to have a super smooth, 100% efficient drivetrain on something like a gravel bike? When you're running it in a very messy, dirty scenario where you're already just attracting a ton of dirt, there's going to be inefficiencies. So the other question really is, do you need to have a 100% efficient drivetrain when it comes to something like a gravel bike? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I think for me at the end of the day, there's also a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and I'm really excited to see things like the classified cassette that's recently come onto the market, make its appearance where there's sort of an internal two by setup within the hub system. Those kind of improvements is what I'm looking forward to see more and more of on the one by drivetrain front. Um, I think as long as we keep that improvement going, sure enough, the one by drivetrain will ultimately, for me, become the go-to and standard drivetrain in the future. That's it from my side. My thoughts on how I try to improve the efficiency of my one by drivetrain. If you like this kind of video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel where we'll have plenty more gravel related content in the future. I'm Vian with Mountain Road Ride. Until next time, see you then.